Welcome this morning to our last outdoor worship service. But we're not outdoors because it's downpouring. But I'm glad you're here. I know sometimes it's like, well, it's going to rain, so I don't want to go and get rained on. But maybe they'll be inside. And, well, here we are. We are inside. The other thing about this morning's worship service is um, the 180 group does their little vacation time on this week, so they're not here, um, including the piano player. Um, Ellen is out of the country visiting her family. Um, we have no piano accompaniment this morning. Um, but I intentionally tried to pick songs that I hoped would be familiar to us. I am always really impressed when we sing without accompaniment. It always sounds really great. I'll keep my microphone on. I don't know if that's good for you or not. Uh, to assist in the singing. Uh, but We'll sing some songs as best we can, and we will worship nonetheless, receiving word and sacrament. So I'm glad you're here this morning. I'm glad you braved the rain or whatever you had to pass through to get here. Um, and I invite you to stand. We'll sing together, Shall We Gather at the River? If notes help you, it's 423 in the red hymnal. Let me find a pitch that will work. <laughs> There we go. Shall we gather at the river where bright angel feet have trod with its crystal tide forever flowing by the throne of God? Yes, we'll gather at the river the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. On the margin of the river, washing up its silver spray, we will walk and worship ever all the happy golden day. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. Ere we reach the shining river, lay we every burden down. Grace our spirits will deliver and provide a robe and crown. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. Soon we'll reach the shining river. Soon our pilgrimage will cease. Soon our happy hearts will quiver with the melody of peace. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. And you've not disappointed singing a cappella. Very good. You have to imagine, as I was picking these songs out, I thought we'd be sitting there in the grass in view of the river. Well, not quite this morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. <clears throat> My
most merciful God. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy God, your word feeds your people with life that is eternal. Direct our choices and preserve us in your truth, that renouncing what is false and evil, we may live in you, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the word. The first reading is from Joshua. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Now therefore revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now, if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery and who did these great signs in our sight. He protected us along all the way that we went and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Um, let us read the Psalms responsibly. It's from Psalm uh, chapter 34. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and the God's ears are, upon, are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to erase the remembrances of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord hears them, and delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted, and saves those whose spirits are crushed. Many are the troubles of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them from everyone. God will keep safe all their bones. Not one of them shall be broken. Evil will bring death to the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be punished. O oh Lord, redeem the life of your servants, and those who put their trust in you will not be punished. The second read, uh, reading is from Ephesians chapter 6. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on the evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet will put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. 
With all of these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. The word of the Lord. Please stand. Alleluia, Lord and Savior, open now your saving word. Let it burn like fire within us. Speak until our hearts are stirred. Alleluia, Lord, we sing for the good news that you bring. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as a living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching at the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if I were to then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe, and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you, that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you wish to go away also? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You perhaps know this poem by Robert Frost, A Road Not Taken. And I'm only going to read the first, the very beginning of it. I'm not the whole thing, but it'll, it'll come up in the course of the sermon. A road, the Road Not Taken by Robert Frost. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood. And sorry I could not travel both and be one traveler. Long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. You can imagine the poet standing there and looking down these paths. Maybe I, I always imagine it when I'm in the woods deer hunting, the, the paths that wander off. And you can't see where they go. They just kind of disappear over the hill or around a bend. The poet is standing there trying to make a decision on which direction to go. And as we were to read through Robert Frost's poem, and we're not going to do that this morning, um, the poet comes to the conclusion that both ways are, are equally good, um, and his regret is that he can't take both at the same time. That's a different play on a spiritual theme that runs through the scriptures and is often taught um, by spiritual teachers. One quick example, a couple quick examples, I should say. Um, the Didache, the teaching of the 12 apostles, is a writing from around 200 AD, early Christian. And the text begins this way. There are two ways, one of life and one of death. And the difference between the two is great. 
the way of life is this. First, you should love God who made you. Secondly, love your neighbor as yourself. And whatever thing you do not desire to be done to you, do not do them to someone else. Now the words of this teaching are this. Bless those who curse you and pray for your enemies and fast for those who are persecuting you. For what credit is it to you if you love those who love you? Do not the Gentiles do the same thing? But love those hating you and you will not have an enemy. That's the didache. So early Christian teachings, early Christian spiritual teachings about standing at the crossroads, making a choice between paths. There are two ways. The difference between the two is great. I often wonder if Robert Frost had this in mind as he wrote this poem, A Road Not Taken. But he really contradicts this notion that there's a great difference between the two. That's an important point in the spiritual teachings about these divided roads. Jesus speaks likewise about it in the seventh chapter of Matthew. He says, enter through the narrow gate. For the gate is wide and the road is easy that leads to destruction. And there are many who take it. For the gate is narrow and the road is hard and that leads to life. And there are few who find it. Again, a kind of contrast with Robert Frost's poem. But this is the spiritual teaching that we find also in our first reading this morning. Joshua is standing there before the assembled tribes of the Hebrew people who've come into the, to the, the promised land and conquered the people that are there and are now about to go off to their various locations and settle themselves in this promised land of God. These are the people whom God has delivered from Egypt. These are the people who have crossed through the Red Sea. These are the people who have wandered through the desert for 40 years being fed by manna and quail. These are the people who have seen God's power at work within them and around them and for them and on their behalf. And to these people, Joshua says, you stand at a crossroads today. Make a choice. Make a decision. Joshua says, now therefore revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt. Serve the Lord. Now if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are now living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord, says Joshua. There's many a quilt sampler or cross-stitch sampler that has that line in it, right? As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. This was a very important matter for Joshua and the Hebrew people in those early days. They were surrounded by foreign religions, foreign gods, foreign peoples. And Joshua acknowledges the reality of that situation. God of the Philistines, God of the Amorites, God of the whoever, God of the Egyptians. you got all kinds of choices. Choose today who you will serve. But remember who has brought you out of the land of Egypt, who has brought you into the promised land. And then Joshua leads by example, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord who has done these things for us. Now we may imagine that such spiritual teachings don't have as much importance to us today in the 21st century. I mean, we're not surrounded by Philistines and Amorites and Egyptians and whatnot, right? We're surrounded by all kinds of Christians. Ask them. They'll tell you. But let me suggest to you that the gods of today are maybe a little more subtle than, than statues and temples and worship places, which Joshua and Joshua's people found those centuries ago. And whether we are tempted by our pocketbooks or by the packers or any number of other things in our lives, we are constantly being drawn away from, from centering our life in God and Jesus Christ. And each moment of each day, we are called to make a choice which path we will choose. There are two ways. One of life and one of diminished life of death. And the difference between the two is great. 
Think of the devotion that, if it's not you, others around you have for their various sports teams. The energy and the time that they will devote to worship. I mean, watching those games. Think of the energy that people put into amassing wealth and money. The energy that it takes in their lives to accumulate bank accounts and possessions. Now don't hear me say that sports are bad. Don't hear me say that we can live in the world without any things. But we are called this day, this moment, and each moment of life to find our center, the center of who we are, the place where we can stand firm, we are invited to find ourselves there with Christ and with nothing else. It's the essence of the first commandment. You shall have no other gods. Nothing else shall be your God. So today, choose whom you will serve. And as you go from here, choose who you will serve. And where you will find meaning and center in your life. And who will guide you? And who will you rely on? Who will you put your trust and faith in? Okay, that's a lot of law, though. And I want to leave you with some gospel, some good news. And it's about choice as well. It's about a choice that precedes our response this morning or as we leave from here. It's a choice that precedes any choice we make at the crossroads we find ourselves. And it's hinted at in this small line in the Gospel reading. Jesus has been talking about himself as the bread of life. And he says these difficult words, those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. And his Jewish hearers are confounded and confused and, and scandalized by this. And we're told many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. But just before that, Jesus reminds the people, in the midst of their confusion and their confoundment, in the midst of their perplexed condition, it is God that chooses you. No one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father, Jesus says. The faith that you have is a gift to you from God. It is a sign that God is at work in your life. God is with you even before you choose him. No one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father, Jesus says. No one can come to faith unless God has worked faith in them. No one is saved except the one that God chooses to save. And I declare to you today in Jesus Christ, you are saved. God acts first for us in the same way that God acted first for those ancient Hebrews those centuries ago. Delivering us from sin and death. And desiring to come into our life to give us center and meaning. You have been chosen by God. God chose you when God have, could have chosen otherwise. Looking upon us all with our fallenness and our brokenness and our sinfulness, God chose you so that we might make a choice. Thanks be to God. Amen. So our hymn of the day is For the Bread Which You Have Broken. I invite you to stand as we sing together. For the bread which you have broken, for the wine which you have poured, for the words which you have spoken, now we give you thanks, O Lord. 
for this promise that you love us by your gift of peace restored, by your call to heaven above us, hallow all our lives, O Lord. With the saints who now adore you, seated at the holy board, may the church still waiting for you keep love's tie unbroken, Lord. In your service, Lord, defend us, in our hearts keep watch and ward. In the world to which you send us, let your kingdom come, O Lord. <clears throat> God has made us God's people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <coughs> With confidence in God's great compassion and generosity, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of God's creation. Faithful God, we pray for the church. Lead it always to proclaim its faith in you, who gives us the words of eternal life. Give your church the gifts of truth and righteousness. And hear our prayers of thanksgiving for the anniversary this week of the baptism of Jack, Jack Bumgarner, Linda Carlson, Shelley Skildum, Brooke Weiss, Thomas Wright, Eric Harmel, Chad Holty, Barrett Greenwood, Tyler Kirsten, Richard Long Henry, James Nyhus, Renee Ailey, Noah Bender, Bradley Rail, Cameron Thompson, Taylor Thompson, and Diane Williard. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our fragile and beautiful planet. Renew our sense of wonder and our determination to care for your creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of the world. Equip them to serve with justice and to dispel the forces of evil. Inspire the citizens of every country to love wisdom and mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the brokenhearted and those whose spirits are crushed. Wrap them in the warm embrace of your all-encompassing love. Restore them to wholeness. We pray especially for Fern, Deanna, Bill and family, Phyllis, Jeff, Charlie, John, Harvey, Bob, Pearl, Mavis, Bella, Nick, Jane, Ev, Drake, Beverly, Judith, George, Mary, Lillian, Judy, Betty, Paul, Dale, Elsie, Wynn, Connie, and those who name now silently or loud. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this assembly as it prepares education ministries. Bless those planning and preparing for Sunday school, confirmation, adult education, and intergenerational learning opportunities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all who have gone before us. 
Give us wisdom to follow their example of faithful living and to stay true to the path of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share Christ's peace with our brothers and sisters. Just a reminder again, if you would fill in the welcome pad near the center aisle, but now while we're trying to sing, because I need every voice to be singing, um, we'll receive the offering and prepare, pre prepare for communion. Um, our, our song during the offering is, All People That On Earth Do Dwell. I'm going to give you a verse, but then I have to go up there and do things. We sing together. All people that on earth do dwell, sing to the Lord with cheerful voice. Him serve with mirth, his praise forth tell. Come ye before him and rejoice. Oh. than his gates with praise approach with joy his courts unto 
Praise the Lord and bless his name always, for it is simply so to do. For why the Lord our God is good, his mercy is forever sure, his truth at all times firmly stood, and shall from age to age endure. To Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, the God whom heaven and earth adore, from us and from the angel host, be praise and glory evermore. Please stand and let us pray. God of mercy and grace, the eyes of all wait upon you, and you open your hand in blessing. Fill us with good things at your table, that we may come to the help of all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join there in ending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, our maker, redeemer, and healer, in the harmonious world of your creation, the plants and animals, the seas and stars were whole and well in your praise. When sin had scarred the world, you sent your son to heal our ills and to form us again into one. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his acts of healing, his body given up, and his victory over death, we await that day when all the peoples of the earth will come to the river to enjoy the tree of life. Send your spirit upon us in this meal, as grains scattered on the hillside become one bread. So let your church be gathered from the ends of the earth, that all may be fed with the bread of life, your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus said, Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. <clears throat> o Lamb of God, you bear the sin of all the world away. You suffered death our lives to save. Have mercy now, we pray.
Is that everyone who desires to receive the sacrament? Please stand and let us pray. I heard some singing there. Someone was humming along. <laughs> Wise and generous God, we thank you that at this holy table you have fed us again with the food of everlasting life. Send us with your blessing to seek the good of our neighbor, to call others to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A couple of brief announcements this morning. I think the sun's trying to sneak out outside, so about the time we get done, it'll all be clear and blue. Um, I will mention the, the there are four bags of laundry from the Gifts Men's Shelter still available to be washed. They kind of got misplaced because I think they came out on an outdoor service two weeks ago. Um, there's two at this upper door. There's two at the bottom door. If you can grab one of those and wash those and bring it back to the office anytime during office hours or next week at worship time, that would be greatly appreciated. You'll see the bags are marked black black plastic bags. They have a tag that says dirty because we were kind of confused about what to do with them for a little while. We weren't sure if they were clean or dirty. So that's what those are about. Come on up, Sandy. Tell us about choir. Yes. Oh, wonderful. It's that time again, you know. Choir starts in two weeks on a Thursday night. I hear a lot of good voices out there, so you that's only right. have to commit to Thursday This is like night. tryouts, isn't it? Yeah. We're going to do this here, though. Here I don't know if they could hear me or not. There you go. <laughs> Thursday night, the first Thursday in September is our first practice from 7 till 8. We sing on Labor Day weekend for the first time at that Sunday service. So please consider joining us. The songs are not that hard. If you don't know which voice area you're in, I can assist with that. You don't have to read notes. Um, but we'd encourage you to help us out with choir this year. We'd like to see it grow. So please come. And it's a really awesome group. I mean, you've, if you've not sung with the choir, you've certainly heard them. And you go, wow, look at all the sound coming out of those few voices. But I think they're a, they're a fun group to be with as well, and you could participate in that. On behalf of Dwayne Albrecht and Randy Roosh, I wanted to make sure I had the announcement for the final softball game tomorrow night. Oh, Games, yeah. plural. Six o'clock? We have a six o'clock, and if we win at six o'clock, we play for the trophy at 7.30. So. All right. It's uh, Come it's make a noise o'clock. if you're able to. Come make some noise. It's, that's a fun group in the, in the stands, too. So let's see. Today's the last outdoor worship service. Uh, messenger thing here. We're losing road relief. Um, want to say anything about our, our, um, our walk for water and toilet things? Not yet, it's just out there and feel free to toss some change or some paper money into it. And Okay, all right, you'll see it in the, in the uh, kind of the vestibule area just out there, so. Was that, anything else? Anything else to bring to our attention this morning? All right, please read through the, the announcements. We've got a few weeks yet to our beginning of Sunday school, but there's notes about Sunday school in there that may apply to you. Um, our final song is Lead On, O King Eternal. I'll invite you to stand as we sing together, and I'll try to find a pitch here. You see, I have, if I'm going to try to lead, I have to make sure I don't get too high. Lead on, O King Eternal, the day of March has come. Henceforth in fields of conquest, your tents will be our home. Through days of preparation, your grace has made us strong. And now, O King Eternal, we lift our battle song. 
Lead on, O King eternal, till sin's fierce war shall cease, and holiness shall whisper the sweet amen of peace. For not with swords loud clashing, nor rolls of stirring drums, but deeds of love and mercy, the holy kingdom comes. Lead on, O King eternal. For gladness breaks like morning wherever your face appears. Your cross is lifted o'er us. We journey in its light. The crown awaits the conquest. Lead on, O God of mine. Yep.